Hi, my name is Chris Young, and I'm shooting this video for the Adafruit Show and Tell feature. Uh, as you notice, I'm in a wheelchair. I've been in a wheelchair my whole life. I have a kind of muscular dystrophy called spinal muscular atrophy type 2. It really isn't practical for me to grab the webcam off my computer and point it around different places for the typical show and tell. So I thought I would shoot this video in advance. When I want to watch TV, uh, most of the time I just use the this little remote control that I have mounted to the front of my wheelchair. I have this wooden stick that I put in my mouth and I can punch the buttons on the remote. I also have my iPad, iPod Touch here on my wheelchair that I can put a little metal tip on the stick and operate my iPod Touch. But when I want to watch TV when I'm in bed, it really isn't practical for me to hold the remote in my hand and to try to push the buttons. So typically what I've done is taken apart a regular remote control and wired some micro switches into it. Here's my bedroom and you can see my cable box and some VCRs on the left. My flat screen is hanging from a bracket on the upper right. Here you can see there's a wire leading from the remote up on top of the cable box down to my bed. I hold those little micro switches in my hand and operate the remote from there. Now I want to show you the old system I used before I built the new one. Typically I would start out with a learning remote like this Sony model. Start by taking apart the remote and laying the circuit board in a flatbed scanner that gives you a nice high resolution image of it. Then I use the flood fill feature on the paint program to help me follow the traces. Here's the component side of the board that I've labeled the locations where I need to solder on the wires. My dad has gotten quite good at surface soldering wires onto little tiny traces. Here's the back side of the micro switches that I hold in my hand. You can see we've got them all wired up into rows and columns. This is a wiring diagram that I give my dad so he knows how to wire it. When the whole thing is completed, we cover the back side with a glob of hot glue to provide strain relief and to insulate it. And here's the finished product. You notice I have 13 micro switches. Four of them are actually device select buttons and they change the function of the other nine buttons so I could operate a total of 36 different functions using these micro switches. Unfortunately, as my disability has gotten worse, holding that many buttons in my hand has gotten to be a little bit cumbersome. Uh, by the end of the evening, my hand is worn out and I can't hardly work it anymore. I needed to reduce the number of switches that I was holding in my hand. That means maybe having switches attached to some sort of controller with a display on it where I could use a few buttons to select items off a menu and then the controller would transmit the IR signals. How about this? The Adreno Uno. I've been looking at these devices for a long time but couldn't come up with anything that I really wanted to make one. Then I found a guy named Ken Schrift had made a library that lets you transmit and receive IR codes really easily. For a display unit, how about this? That should be familiar to all of you. Originally, I was going to wire the micro switches in parallel with the five push buttons that are on the shield, but then I would have had to drape the wires all the way from the top of the TV, across my chest, and down to my right hand. Instead, I came up with another system where I essentially have a remote control, remote control. I took a simpler remote like this one and wired just four switches into it. I even put in a jack in case I wanted to try different kinds of switch configurations. Essentially what happens is I push the micro switch. This sends a signal to the Adreno. The Adreno uses it to move the cursor around on the display and then the Adreno sends the proper signal back to my TV or my cable box. Here's the completed device sitting on top of my TV. So you can see I can pause the picture, uh, restart it again, 
do rewind, fast forward, whatever I want to do. The USB cable runs down to the wall where it's plugged into a simple USB charger that powers the device. Here's a close-up view of the display. You can see there's a little cursor moving from symbol to symbol as I push on the buttons. Some of those are custom divine characters, uh, one of the features of that particular display. There I'm scrolling the display up and down. There are uh, seven commands across each line and a total of eight lines of commands that control various parts of my TV, cable box, and two VCRs. Here are some construction photos before we put the thing together. We've got the shield assembled and then a little circuit board up there in the upper right that has a infrared LED, an infrared receiver, a transistor, and a resistor. And then finally we have the enclosure which I think you might recognize as one of your products. We actually took a moto tool to it and chopped it up quite a bit to get everything to fit the way that we wanted to. It was bigger than I wanted to sit on top of the TV so we cut it apart and reassembled it and ground on it and managed to wedge it all in there. Assemble it, mount it on a bracket, paint the whole thing black and away we go. So that wraps up the prepared demonstration. Uh, we'll close out this video and then I'll get on the webcam live and answer any questions anybody has and I will also tell you a little bit about some other projects that I'm working on that we'll maybe show off in a week or two.